Yeah. Great. So cool. So this session is pretty much um, going to be about 30 minutes. Um, hopefully we keep it very short. And for me, it's like feeding for CEOs, right? Because you all are amazing um, MCPs and CEOs of uh, one of the biggest companies in the world. <laughs> um, and the objective for the session one is that you understand the state of bidding in your entity. Um, you start out with clarity um, so that you don't spend a lot of time, a lot of months trying to understand, oh, what am I supposed to do? Um, how is, you know, what's going on with my BD? And then lastly, that you be a BD centric CEO. What this simply means is that you can support your MCVPs um, with understanding, because if you really don't understand um, anything about BD or the role or, you know, have some insight, um, you really will not be able to support your MCVPs or even support, you know, um, the entity in general in achieving your BD goals. So this is the objective for the session, right? So the flow is this, we're gonna talk about BD, um, just check in, um, then we will talk about your entity's context, right? So, you know, what is going on um, in AP region right now in BD? What is the data telling us? Because data is very important. And then we will talk about BD life hacks for you to either set up BD in your entity if you're um, an entity that currently does not do BD or you already do BD and you want to upgrade it, right? Then lastly, how to be the BD boss, just talking about the CDAs and what you can do um, very quickly. I will try and keep my eyes on the chat, right? Okay, so you already know me and I'm Vicky. And the reason I'm here is because I like to track BD and I'm addicted about BD. Like I really just do anything BD for the last four years, my life has been BD both personal and professional. And you can find me on Instagram at Vivitori. But if you are more interested in BD content, you can find me at The Money Preneurs. That's where I, I really post more um, BD inside or business development information. So now let's move on to, let's talk BD, right? So I have a first question um, for you guys and you can really just use, wait a minute, I think I should do this on, by a slight show so I have a full screen. Wait. So you can really just use the um, annotate feature um, to just coach, like tick yes or no um, on the screen. But the first question, like as an entity, right, is BD your focus this year? So I'm gonna give like one or two minutes for a couple of people to reply. You can also reply in the chat, that's fine. Mm, Isaac in Korea, yes. <laughs> okay. I just, I'm just waiting for seeing if anyone like doesn't have BD as a focus. Okay, three, four. It's like huge yes. A lot of people. Great. Australia as well. I guess. Okay, there are a lot of entities that are going to have videos to focus this year. Yes, as well for Nepal. Yes, I see a lot of yeses in the chat. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. So we established something, and that's that um, a lot of the entities here within AP. Um, I'm going to have BD as their focus this year. So it means that this session is very relevant for most of you. I, so far, I didn't see any no. So maybe it's an abstention. All right, so let's move on. So the next question is, why is BD important for your entity? Um, I understand that you, know, you guys have said that BD is your focus, but just also to get some insight, you can drop the message in the chat. You can take a couple of seconds to unmute and share. But why do you think that BD is important for your entity? Anyone? Again, cover overhead costs in MC. Um, diversify revenue stream. Great. 
uh, BD can support our event revenue. Cool. Okay, so most of all of these are very revenue related. Great. Um, support other products, amazing. Just a very quick example. We all know what happened or what was happening with Isaac. Um, with a partnership for the portfolio so we can achieve the goals, create partnerships, great. Support in making impact through programs. I really like the impact part, sorry. So um, I was gonna say something before my next slide. So this, the, the, what I was gonna say is, um, other than revenue, which is like the key driver for what we do today, right? It is also very relevant if you're um, intending to build sort of like visibility, credibility. So you do that with partnerships as well. And diversifying revenue stream is very important. We also what COVID um, did to a lot of our revenue streams. And so, you know, we've learned to not focus on just only one product, create financial st stability for the entity, or cash flow, explore more event forms of Isaac. So all very correct answers. So it's very important that we know um, why BD is important. So we have clarity and we know what direction we want to push or channel our business development department to in the entity. Um, so the next question is, what do you want to achieve for BD this time? So this is like a more personal reflection for you. Um, just understanding, do you want to, um, you know, make more revenue? Of course, everybody wants to make more revenue, right? But is this like the key driver? Or um, as an entity, you want to focus more on, you know, um, partnership management, right? You currently have some partners and maybe last year or a couple of years ago, they were not managed the best. So as part of your BD, you want to focus on the account management slash the value delivery part of, you know, of the, the, the department, or you really just want to use BD to forge partnerships that can drive credibility of your entity. Uh, a quick example is that maybe you have a partnership with Google, right? And they don't give you money. Um, so far with all my experience in Google, they haven't given me a single dime, but the fact that you have Google logo on your, you know, your um, email signature or on your event, collect, um, event booklet uh, or your event um, poster already sort of attracts all the kind of partners because they're like, oh, this is a credible organization. That can be another direction or another um, thing you want to achieve with BD, right? So, and that will influence the kind of partners that you're going to go after. So it's very important that you have clarity. Sometimes the bigger guys, right? It's not every time that big corporations are the ones that are likely to give you the money. Sometimes you may easily sign partnerships that are revenue drivers from startups because maybe they have a better need for your products. And sometimes you may sign bigger corporations just to get um, you know, visibility or credibility. So it's very important to understand what do you want to achieve for BD system specifically to the entity. So we move. Um, why is my screen hanging? Right, so let's talk about data, right? Um, so data is life. I, normally I would have expected us all to have a live session where we check also the GFP data records, but I have put in some screenshots that um, we give us a bit of insight into what the data is telling us um, as a region, right, our BD context. So what are the numbers telling us? This is the first screenshot. Let me know um, if you see it quite clearly. So the one with purple is the BD entity revenue. This is the entity actual revenue distribution um, screenshot, right, uh, from our GFB. And this one, this purple where you see my um, cursor right now represents the contribution that BD brings. And as you can see, it is the largest, it's about 45%. And this is AP, right? So this data has been taken from the 1st of August to 30th of April, as you, as you can see. And this is only for Asia Pacific region. Um, it has about 45%, yeah, because you look at it from almost 25% to 40, 60. Um, so it has about 45% of um, the contribution coming only from BD. And just here you see underneath um, the entity total revenue under, um, still for the same time period, it's about 1.2 million. This is executed actual. So um, this is how much we have driven so far, right? 1.2 million. 
And you can see for only BD is contributing about 432,000, right here. This is for Asia Pacific region alone, okay? Just follow, follow me. So what are the numbers telling us? The very first thing is that AP is very dependent on BD. Um, whether we like it or not, as a region, we depend a lot on BD. And that's what those numbers just told us. Out of 1.2 million that we've gotten, about 435,000 of that is coming from business development. Now, this is another screenshot. Um, this is budgeted actual, right? So the first one, executed actual, this is what we budgeted to make. Um, we plan to do 1.6 million between April August last year and April this year, same dates, same data, same region. And, and just to confirm again what we're saying, we even actually plan to make more money from BD than we have made. So um, budgeted actual is 483,000 out of 1.6 million. That is coming from BD. So the second thing is that AP loves BD, right? We already established that because not only are we dependent on it, we plan to depend on it. Very obvious data, but they're leading somewhere. Now, how is your entity really doing with BD, right? So this is like Asia Pacific as a region. This is like what we have, you know, it is very dependent on BD. We plan to make a lot of money from BD and our revenue stream is almost 45% depending on BD. On BD. Right now, it's almost scary, but I can understand the shift because during COVID, everyone switched, you know, to doing a lot more BD. So, you know, the numbers are showing that. Now, this is like entity data. Um, I think after this call, when you have time, you can just check the GFB data um, and see how your entity really is doing um, BD-wise. But this is goal achievement, you know, BD revenue goal achievement, right? So there's a goal achievement survey, and I have just taking out the relevant ones. So this uh, for AP region, same time period. And you can see like the first five entities here, I think this is Japan, Indonesia, Vietnam, India, Malaysia. These ones are the ones having the highest um, goal achievement um, rates uh, with Japan having over 300%. Now, whether this is an overachievement or this is, a, this is an actual um, challenge of planning, um, I cannot tell right now. Only Japan can tell, right? So the question you want to ask yourself, did we plan to make so little and we were so great at it that we made a lot or we did not put data into consideration when we we're planning and fixing our numbers in terms of goals? So this is very important. As, as exciting as it is to see these green numbers, they can also, of these green colors, they can also be red flags that maybe we are not planning properly as an entity and maybe we're not taking data into consideration to plan properly, right? But so far, this is what I have. Um, so the, the good thing though is like, compared to other regions, right? Um, we have a more stable, you know, distribution. For example, if I take out one, if I take out Japan and I take out Vietnam and I take out maybe um, um, India, I still see the revenue um, coming from BD still stable. It's still about 350 something thousand. Um, versus other regions, probably if you take out a two, two entities, then it goes drop. So it means that only one entity is contributing over 50% of the BD revenue that you see on the region. But I took out most of this slide just so that we can focus on what's important right now. Um, and I cannot show what the percentage is for every entity, but there are some entities doing as little as 4%. And worst of all, there are some entities that we do not have any data about. So we cannot even tell what's the health of their business development right now. Now that is a red flag. So question for you as MCP elect, right? As, as intending, um, right, actually not intending, as preparing presidents or MCPs of your entities, what is your BD data telling you right now? Are you achieving your goals? Um, are you overachieving? Is that, a, is that a call to action to plan better with previous data in mind? Are you very much underachieving like two, three, four, five percent? Um, are you not planning properly or you're not recording properly? Because another issue is that we only have the data that you give us, right? And you also only have the data that you impute. So 
being very consistent and careful and you know correct with the data that you impute um, for your revenues, for your costs is very important as MCPs to pay attention to this. So the last thing that the data is telling us is that BD works for AP as a region, right? So we've seen it um, that it works for most entities. Averagely, we have over about 50% of entities in AP doing reasonably well in achieving their BD goals. So now we have all of this information. What can you pay attention to as MCP, right? What should you do as next steps? Last data, um, before we move on to like interesting call to actions. This is your BD initiatives like profitability when it comes to entity. This is MC revenue, this is LC revenue. This is entity, so this is like MC and LC put together. This is your sales timeline. Um, I'm gonna minimize this so you can see properly. The first thing you should pay attention to is where you have the highest inflow of cash from BD. And you can see here, we have two timelines that are consistent, right? So we have one between February to April here on entity revenue. So even MC and LC, and even for, for MC here, we also have between February and April, right? So where the graph is going, the blue one is your, um, So between October and December. This is your story, the highest inflow of, I confirm that everyone can hear me because my internet was kind of disrupted right now. Cool, okay. So now what you can focus on as MCP is your sales timeline. This is for AP region, right? So maybe it may be slightly different for your entity specifically, but generally this is when AP makes the most of the money. So now, how and what would you use with, uh, what would you do with this information? your sales timeline and your peak periods. So what, when you look at the graph for your entity, what is that time where you're most likely to sign more partnership? Which month of the year? Those may just be your sales peak period. Um, for us, it was around October to December. Um, when I was MCVP for, for, for ASG for Singapore, it was around that time as well, right? Because we had a, an interesting product, right? And between February and April, we also had, I think, a um, yes, we had one product as well for a particular company that was still revenue generating. Those may just be your sales peak period as an entity. So you want to pay attention to one, your sales timelines, two, your best sellers, right? So which product are you selling at that time that you're getting the most money? you know, your lead to an actual sale, how long does it take as an entity for you to make a sale, right, within that period? So you need to pay attention to all of this, um, you know, um, as, as MCP and as a CEO that wants to support PD in the region. Just gonna <laughs> struggle with virtual life, okay. So let's move on. Now to the third part, I'm really going to introduce in, into the, the, the session, like pay attention, don't get lost. If you get lost, please drop a message in the chat or feel free to like, yeah, just drop a message in the chat so I can attend to it, right, um, as I'm going. So now is that what support is available for you? So I know that this may seem a lot of overwhelming or showing all of this data and maybe if you're not coming from a BD background, you really do not, you know, know how to manage. So these are like, what we can do for you as AI and RO, right? What is planned? Pre-planning support. Your MCVP BD, of course, will have BD transition. And within the BD transition, they have been enriched BD courses that are available, self-learning. They have to actually go and find the information. So there won't be so much hand-holding that, oh, we're going to come and, you know, create. There's no, like, 
Google Academy class ready as far as I know so far. So there's going to be really, really transition and there are courses embedded in the transition toolkit that they can take. Um, there's going to be RSS and the BD, BD Hub is available, right? So there's a lot of information there. And then there will be live sales session at IC. So before the term actually starts, these are some of the things that are available to you in terms of support. I will move really fast because of my time now, because there is also something interesting I want you to know towards the end of the session. So the routine and on-demand support available to you guys. Um, there'll be global commission calls that are usually focused on GCPs and they'll be monthly. Focus on GCPs and capacity building. So if you have MCVPs that are probably green in BD or not very, you know, um, actually I recommend that every MCVP should attend global commission calls because they're usually focused on building the capacity of your MCVPs and sharing good case practices from other entities. Then you have a community when they can always ask questions. You know, there's the regional one, there's a global one. If you're too shy to maybe talk in the, the global one, please feel free to drop a message in the AP Regional Commission, and you know, someone will definitely answer you. Then the other thing that they have this time is they have arrow coaches that will check in on them monthly, right? So um, RSTs are going to be assigned to different entities, and what they will do is a telegram check-in to check in and see how things are going, especially for the first, first few months as you're settling down, um, just to ensure that we can provide support. But they would not be um, sending calls with anyone that is not interested in these calls. So the consultancy calls will be with regional office or AI and it is on demand, okay? Now, BD Life Hacks. This is like, I want you to pay attention to very much as, as, much, as, uh, as much as you can and ask all the questions. Right, so if you want to set up BD in your entity or you want to upgrade BD in your entity, these are some of the things that you should do. Just before you do that, keep in mind that BD is not just sales, right? Um, because I've seen a lot of people, when they talk BD, they focus only on how much we get. No, BD has sales, it has your account management. It also has product innovation, right? Um, so what are the exciting features or things you can add to the product that you're selling to make it better. That's part of BD, it's part of innovating and just making sure that you can always be relevant in the market. So don't forget that these three things make up the business development department and don't make your BD just about sales. So when you're speaking to your MCVP, make sure that it's not just about signing $10,000, um, um, right? It's about Will the partner get the value from $10,000? How is the account management flow? What is the value delivery principle? How can we make sure that we come back, take this product and make it better and we can sell it for $15,000 in the future? This is BD. Gonna try and keep my eyes on the chat. Okay, so setting up BD in your entity. One is what's the business value of Isaac in your country? So for those of you that do not have BD, how can you define what the business value of our BD is in your entity? You can talk to alumni, you can talk to other entities that are already doing BD and map out some, some, some value propositions. Why we have standard value proposition in ISEC, it may differ from country to country, what companies are usually looking forward or looking for from um, a youth organization like ISEC. So you need to define this. Then you need to understand what is the current brand visibility or clarity. There are some countries that Isaac is understood as a student club. And there are some countries that understand Isaac for what it is, a youth development organization or youth voice. How is Isaac perceived in your country? This is going to inform how you design your proposals, what exact kind of language to use in your proposals, and even you know, the kind of ways that you sell and the kind of companies that you sell to. And lastly, you want to build relevant products. If you do not have BD right now, the first thing you need to think about is building relevant products, right? Same thing happened to me in, in ASG in 2021 term. Um, so you need to sit down and think about connecting all those three things I said I talked about before. Which ones can I use to build a product that is going to be relevant for my market? So some of the things I mentioned, try this out. Speak with alumni, do a market research. Market research is, you're just having conversations with business stakeholders, not to sell, but to get insights. The first few months as MCVP, I had I spent time just having meetings with business, booking meetings with businesses, 
not to sell a product or not to say, oh, this is ISAF, we have 10,000 members, we can do this, we can do this for you, but to ask questions like, what is your direction as a business right now? How are you dealing with COVID? How do you usually do marketing as a business? Would you have a budget if you wanted? So those kind of suggestive questions are market research questions. So you may want to just book a meeting with a company that is looking like a potential client, but you're not planning to sell anything. You're just planning to have insightful conversations, right? What is your government interested in? There are some countries that have government that are interested in youth entrepreneurship. Maybe that's a sign that you need to design a product around that. There are some that are more interested in SDGs. What fundings are available? What companies are interested in SDGs or CSR? Um, which organizations are looking for youth markets? A lot of questions, guiding questions. I'm like very pressed for time, so I'm gonna like go really fast. So some of the simple hacks that you can do is build an arsenal of GCPs. You're just starting out bidding in your entity, so you probably do not have your own good case practices, but you want to know which countries have done something similar that you can use as GCPs. So for example, ISEC in Malaysia has done an innovation challenge before, and you're looking at something similar, get a report from them, get the link, get the data that they use, you know, and insert all of this in your proposal. You want to have a huge arsenal of GCPs within Asia Pacific, outside of Asia Pacific, in different regions, as much as possible, very important. So build a national portfolio with opportunities for co-creation. Make sure that you already have all the details of what you want to do in your national portfolio. I usually advise that you have your portfolio ready before you start the term, right? Um, your membership data is gold. Do not joke with it. So you want to know which of your members is in which department. This is information that your partners will usually ask. If you're selling to a finance partner, chances are they want to know how many percentage of your members are reading finance-related courses. So, and how many of them are in third year or fourth year. So it's not at the time you're selling, you start to get this data. Make sure you keep this data. It's really important. Lastly, collaborate, cross-sell and co-sell. You can sell an RO product because you're just starting out. You may not have the time to already build that product. But regional office already has product that you can sell and you can get revenue sharing. Or you can sell also products from another entity if it's relevant for your company. So now, common proposition. I'm going to skip this because of time, but these are some of the things that we usually, you know, sell to, um, ent um, to companies. The last one is youth insight. So these are some of the ways that you can do it in your conferences, in your events, is youth insights, survey, networking spaces, right? Digital marketing, talent acquisition, and so on and so forth. Now, for those of you that already have BD in your entity, oh, I feel like I'm an avatar right now, going really, really fast, really, really fast. I'm so sorry. I hope that you can assimilate as fast as, as I am speaking, um, but I know that my time is up, or almost up, whatever it is. Um, but if you have questions, please make sure that you're compiling them. I'm going to like rush to them really quickly. Um, but it's a lot of session to have in 30 minutes. Upgrading BD in your entity. So you already have BD, fantastic. How can you improve and make sure that you're getting more money and doing more partner delivery satisfaction? Um, you're doing more innovation and you can generally just upgrade BD in your entity. One, bestseller analysis. What is that product slash event or whatever it is that you're selling? Who is that partner that is bringing the most income? In my case, maybe it was career care in 2021. Best an analysis is what will probably make um, Nemani, my successor, to sit down and analyze this product and improve on it to make more money from it in 2022. So what is that product? Pricing versus delivery analysis. I'm currently selling this for $5,000. Is it worth $5,000? Do partners feel satisfied and happy to pay this amount? Am I underselling it? Should I increase the amount? Should I increase the value delivery? You need to analyze all of these things. CRM optimization is very important. What CRM tool are you using to track your value delivery or your account management? There are some entities that do not have any CRM. CRM is customer relationship management. So what are you using to just track that data to ensure that Monthly, there's a touch point with the partner to ensure that partners are filling the NPS survey after an engagement. Very important. I don't have the time to talk about all of these things here. Now, next thing you need to do is showcase successful partnerships. So if you have partnerships that have been successful, how are you showcasing them? Or you just deliver an event and you do not have a report, or you don't have a graphical form of it. How are you showcasing them? You have an after story of that event that you can insert in your next proposal. 
very important, right? Showcasing is super important. So some of the things you want to try out is ask yourself these questions. Am I underselling? Is value delivery working for me? How do I make an upward innovation for the account renewal? So I currently have these accounts paying me 5,000. What can I tweak? What can I add to them? What can I upsell to them to make sure that I get 7,000 in the next, um, the next partnership renewal? Right, so build a B2B network and capitalize on the industry. If you're already selling to an e-commerce, chances are you can sell to more e-commerce, right? So how can you capitalize that industry and trend that is working? If you're already selling to education, like schools, universities, chances are you can sell more to those network. Explore co-selling if you want to, it's really important, like free money. For example, this year, we just, our own course, like co-sold, um, with AI, the Keystone Partnership, signed for 14,000. I literally did not do any delivery, but I get 1,400, which is 10%, right? Without doing any delivery. That's a lot of money coming to me for co-selling bigger. So if you sell with RO, you don't have to deliver, but you're getting money, right? Same thing Malaysia did last year, right? The Salesforce Partnership, they got a thousand um, SG, uh, 1, USD rather, without having to deliver anything or manage anything. So how can you sell bigger in your mind? Very important and never too early to think about sustainability. I know you're just starting out your term, but make decisions thinking about will this product, if I put it, if I make it go live right now, will it be relevant in the next two years? Can it be improved upon and upscaled? That's the mindset of startups. Scalability is always there, right? And so quick CTAs for everybody. So whether you're starting out BD in your entity or you are upgrading BD in your entity, map out your timeline. I mentioned this before know what the peak timeline for inflow is in your entity and then what products are there and how can I improve products there or what can I put there? Start building your BD portfolio. And I will advise you to be, build your BD portfolio with Brita. So don't put events or products for every two months or every three months. Give some space for partnership events, co-creation. So you may go to sell to a partner and they tell you, okay, fantastic events you have here, but once it may be specific something, but you already have your timeline to choked up. So how then do you now co-create something specific with your partner, right? So give some breather spaces where you can insert partner specific, you know, activities that you can co-create. Support your BD transition as MCP. Make sure you pay attention to what your MCVP BD is currently learning from his or her predecessor, right? Or, or whoever is a predecessor, if there is no M previous MCVP BD, whoever is doing transition to that person, you want to be sure that you put an eye on that and then start looking for co-sales opportunity, okay? Um, later on, you guys will get more information on co-selling with RO, co-selling with AI or whatnot. So the last thing is that it's always a progressive phase, okay, for BD. Even if you already have BD in your entity right now, it's always progressive, right? Focus on your value offering. It's very important. What's the unique value proposition that Isaac in XYZ can offer to companies? It may not be the same with what Isaac in, ABC is offering, but focus on what the unique value proposition and the things that influence this is how the companies currently perceive my country, I'm sorry, my entity. How, the, how, how, how is the membership strength of my entity? Some, some entities may have smaller membership, but very interesting profile. Some may have a larger membership, right? So there are different strengths and different value propositions. Focus on your value offerings and then build something that works Make sure that you enjoy the process because BD can be a long ride. It's a marathon and not a sprint, okay? Very important that you have that mindset. So don't start, you know, budgering or badgering your MCVP three months into the line. I haven't seen any sale. I haven't seen any sale. No, you're not being a BD-centric CEO like that. Sometimes most sales take at least four months to close. So just make sure you are supporting them and make sure that they are ticking the boxes and doing the right things. In your monthly reviews, how many proposals have they sent? Oh, no sale this month. It's fine. It's okay. Are they on track? Are they off track? Okay. So if you don't have all of this insight, you cannot support properly. So that's it for the session. Are there any questions? Oh, I'm so sorry, Mary. I hope I did not overspill so much. <laughs> so um, what are some of the questions? Anyone has any questions? May I please go on, Ali? Uh, so I think on BD, like... If, uh, because you talked about pro uh, a little bit about process time, and I guess like also on okay no 
small question is more on like the branding and more on like the packaging, for example, like which entities are actually pretty good with branding. Not that, oh, sorry, uh, product packaging and innovation, because like right now, I think um, Isaac in Australia has uh, a lot of things that we want to offer. And at the same time, uh, you know, the whole idea of being kind of customer centric and providing them with the right support, uh, sorry, providing them with solutions. But then, um, yeah, like to what extent do you do product uh, packaging? How do you, how do I support my MCVP in finding, finding like product packaging, especially when they're an international um, MCVP? Because I think that's the biggest concern I have where majority of my team is international and they might not know the context. So what would, actually, what should I do to help them um, speed up that process of understanding? Mm. So I think first in their transition and even the market research phase, you want to handhold them. And I can definitely relate because I was also um, an international MCVP, right, for Singapore. And I was clueless at the beginning, but PB was very supportive. Um, mine was even worse because coming from a totally different region. But that market research was actually a suggestion that PB and I came out together brainstorming. So just having meetings and sometimes we'll have these meetings together. So you may even decide to attend the first few meetings with them just so that, you know, they get comfortable and you can show them without necessarily telling them this is how to do it, but you can show them how to do it. Just And, and if you're not also a BD, um, like you're not also an MCP that comes from a BD re, um, background and maybe you're not very comfortable having sales meetings, you can have prior meetings. So every time she's about to have a meeting, just set like some of the pointers okay, so this is the company, right? This is how this company is in this region, um, in this country. Um, have you researched on their website? Do you have some idea on how or what they would be expecting? And you can give them your perspective. Like in Australia, right? This is how this company is perceived. So maybe this is what they are looking for. Or, you know, so this is how you need to go into the meeting, this mindset. So it's very important that those first few months, um, you are, you know, trying to give her all the context or him all the context that they may need regarding specific um, situation because it's a case by case basis. And maybe you also want to point them in the right direction to kickstart. So you can let them know, okay, maybe try the e-commerce industry or try the banking industry. They're usually the ones that support, you know, youth organizations in Australia or this is the industry that is more likely to support in, in Australia. So when you point them in that direction, I'm pretty sure that at least that's a good head start. Um, another thing you can do is that ensure that they are talking to entities that you consider to be advanced TBD or they're talking to their regional coach, you know, whoever, so that they're having those conversations that they need to have. Because a lot of time, if an MCVP is overwhelmed, sometimes they're, they're feeling like, oh, they're, they're not capable. And they start to look inwards rather than look outward for the solution. So make sure that you take them out of that headspace that, oh, I'm coming from an, um, a different entity or from an internet, I'm an international MCVP. I don't have the context. Context you can get very quickly if they have the basic capacity. Um, great. Um, so I don't see any more questions in the chat and my time is up anyways. So you guys can definitely um, thank you, Ali. You guys can definitely always, always reach out to me. Always. I try to be very responsive. Or you can um, drop your messages, you know, via your, reg your regional coaches, um, um, your ED coaches, and I will definitely answer all of that. Thank you so much and see you in the next session.